In this video, we're going to be looking at hypothesis testing, and we're going to be looking at testing whether a sample is part of a population. So when we take a sample, so imagine we take 10 or 15 bits of data from all of the data from the population, the mean of the sample should still be the mean of the population. But the variance or standard deviation should be less because if you had one piece of data that was two standard deviations away, that wouldn't be too unusual. But if you kept on taking more and more data and it kept being two standard deviations away, that's much more unlikely. So the variance of a sample is variance divided by how many bits of data are in that sample. And if you square root both sides, you can also say standard deviation, square root in top and bottom, is standard deviation over root n for the sample. So here we've got a question. The weight of beans in a tin produced by company A is normally distributed with a mean of 200 grams and a standard deviation of 2.5 grams. Company A suspects that the mean weight of tins from a machine is lower than it should be. Write down their null and alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is going to be that the mean weight is still 200 grams. So the mean is 200. The alternative hypothesis is going to be the mean is lower because they think it's lower than 200. So the mean is less than 200 grams. So we've got a sample of 15 tins taken. The mean weight for the sample is 198. Carry out a test at the 1% significance level to see if there's evidence that the machine is producing tins with a mean of less than 200. So we've got a normal distribution. We've got 200 in the middle. And we're looking for the 1% of most extreme values. So if 198 lies within the 1%, the most extreme 1%, then we will accept the alternative hypothesis. If it doesn't, we'll accept the null hypothesis. So we can, if we work out what this critical value is, and then we'll see if it's bigger or less than 198. So we're going to work out what this value is and then compare it to 198. So we're going to have a mean of the means 200 that hasn't changed. And we're going to have our standard deviation as 2.5 over square root n, which is 15. And we're going to work out the area of 1%. So we'll grab the calculator. So menu 7. We're going to work out the, use the inverse normal function. And we're going to take an area, we want 1%. So that's 0 0.01. Our standard deviation is going to be 2.5 over square root 15 and the mean is 200. So that gives us our critical value of 198.5. So the critical value is 198.5. So this is 198.5, and the mean from our sample was 198. So 198 is in the critical region. So 198 is less than 198.5. So 
So 198 is in the critical region, in the most extreme 1%. So it's in the most extreme 1%. So we can reject H0 and accept H1. So we're going to say there is evidence to suggest the machine is producing pins with a mean less than 200 grams. Okay, here we've got another question. The length of a bus journey from Luton to London is normally distributed with a mean of 85 minutes and a standard deviation of 7 minutes. The bus company suspects that the mean bus time has changed. Write down the null and alternative hypothesis for a two-tailed test. So a null hypothesis is going to be that the mean is still 85 minutes. Our alternative hypothesis is its two-tailed test, so it's simply going to be the mean is not 85 minutes. So it could either be higher or lower, but it's not 85 minutes. So we've got a sample of 10 bus journeys, so n is 10, and the mean of the sample is 90 minutes. We're going to test at the 1% significance level whether there's evidence the mean time has changed. So we've got our mean of 85 in the middle, and we've got a two-tail test. So we're looking at both ends, and we want the most extreme 1% of data, which means we're going to have half a percent on each side. So let's look up our, well, let's firstly write down the mean. So the mean is going to be 85. And the standard deviation is going to be standard deviation, which is 7 over square root n, so root 10, 7 over root 10. So let's work out these two critical values here. So we get the calculator. So menu 7, inverse normal. So we're going to have an area of half a percent for the first one, 0 0.005. A standard deviation of 7 over root 10 and a mean of 85. So that's 79.3. So 79.3. So critical values 79.3. So our critical region is less than 79.3. And we do the same again, this time with an area of 99.5%. So the mean and standard deviation are the same, and that's 90.7. So our critical regions... So our most extreme 1% is less than 79.3 or more than 90.7. And our mean time is 90 minutes, which is in the acceptable region. So 90 minutes is in the acceptable region. So we're going to accept the null hypothesis accepting the null hypothesis so there's not enough evidence
to suggest the meantime has changed. 